in the Pantages Theater in Hollywood and the Century Theater in New York. It's the 28th Annual Awards of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Ladies and gentlemen, the Academy Award Orchestra with Andre Previn conducting. <laughs> You might like to know how Academy Award winners are chosen. In early February, ballots are sent out to the 15,000 members of the various motion picture crafts and guilds. Each person marks his ballot and posts it to the accounting firm of Price Waterhouse. The results are tallied, and the five top entrants receive one of these, the Academy Certificate. The five names in each category are placed on the final ballot. This ballot is mailed to the 1,700 members of the Academy. They mark this in secret, and send it to Price Waterhouse. The final tally is made. The results are known to only two people, a Price Waterhouse man here and one in New York. The winners will receive one of these, the Oscar. Their names are in a stack of sealed envelopes on the stage. The first of these envelopes will be opened shortly, so you can tell your neighbors in the morning you were one of the first to know. of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, Mr. George Seaton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. During the past year, the motion picture screen has become wider and wider. It has also become truly international. It has viewed the world from every part of the world. If this presentation has a theme, that is it. Consider the five nominated pictures tonight. Each one was shot, in most part, in the actual locale. Last year, 38 American companies were shooting pictures abroad. When the Academy was born 28 years ago, the number was two. And now, happily enough, the reverse is true. Foreign companies are shooting in the United States. A Japanese company has recently been on location here in California. A French company is planning to journey to New York and an Italian company to Chicago. All this implies more than setting up a camera. It implies perception and understanding of those people and those locales. So we may fully hope that in the days to come, when we speak of widescreen, what we will really mean is breadth of vision. And now our master of ceremonies. A young comedian I have always enjoyed. In the last 24 hectic hours, I have learned to respect him, Mr. Jerry Lewis. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Seaton. The way I'm dressed tonight, I should be selling cools. <laughs> I would like to say that, ladies and gentlemen, you are here tonight to our live television performance of I'll Cry Tomorrow. <laughs> we are gathered here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, for the annual Academy Awards, formerly known as Disneyland. You probably know last year Bob Hope was the master of ceremonies and he did a very, very wonderful job and they tried terribly hard to get him to do it again this year. But unfortunately, he couldn't be located. He was at home. <laughs> Just to give you an idea of how Bob travels and he travels quite a bit, the stickers on his trunk are marked anywhere. <laughs> anywhere, it's a form of a gag. Oh, heavens. <laughs> 
But Bob is really a wonderful guy, and he's always going somewhere to do something for someone, specifically entertaining the troops. And you may not know this, but Bob has a very, very fine grown son, and he had to enlist just to see his father. <laughs> see, that's also in the form of a gag. The straight lines you'll kind of get, and these gags will seem a little questionable, but help me, won't you? <laughs> Before I go any further, ladies and gentlemen, I should like very much to thank Mr. Jack and Trotter and the Sands Hotel in Las Vegas, where Dean and I are currently appearing, for allowing us to appear here tonight. And I must publicly thank my good partner, Dean Martin, because last night in Las Vegas, at the roulette wheel, he arranged it so that we will be in Las Vegas for five more years. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we did two shows in Las Vegas, ladies and gentlemen, last night, and then we had to fly in, and we just about made rehearsal here at the Academy. And I have to thank the freeways. The freeways here in Los Angeles. Those are the ones to thank. Because <laughs> we never figured we'd make it on time, but the freeways are such a fantastic thing today. What with the overpasses and the underpasses and the circles and the turns, etc. I don't care where you live in the city of Los Angeles. All you have to do is get in your car, get on the freeway, and in 15 minutes, you're lost. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I live in the Pacific Palisades. I live in the Pacific Palisades, ladies and gentlemen. The other night I got in my car, got onto the freeway, and in a matter of minutes, I was downtown Los Angeles. The only trouble was I was going to the corner for a newspaper. <laughs> the smog must use the freeway because it gets to my house in no time. The last gag I'll ever buy from a trumpet player, but I do want to say... I do have a note here, ladies and gentlemen, from the Motion Picture Academy, reminding me to thank Walt Disney for loaning us these Oscars tonight. <laughs> these are the jokes, let's face it. But I do want to say, I might add that Mr. Disney, very seriously, has earned every Oscar that he has been presented with. He has earned it, ladies and gentlemen. He's a great showman. The reason all his pictures make a fortune is simple. It's obvious. He pays his stars very little. What can a gopher make? <laughs> a seal. All they want is a good meal. For instance, they were on location a couple of months ago for the African lion. And they were shooting a scene this afternoon. And at noon, the director yelled, lunch. And before he knew what he was. <laughs> oh, yes. Before we go on, ladies and gentlemen, I do have several important announcements to make. And the first is from the management of the Pantages Theater. We would like you to know that because of the length of the Academy Awards tonight, the second feature will not be shown. <laughs> also, here's an announcement for all the people that are here for the awards tonight. The police department has asked me to tell you that double parking will only be permitted for losers. <laughs> oh, I knew that one. <laughs> And another thing, ladies and gentlemen, for the people in the audience, please don't throw your popcorn boxes in the aisles. Please don't do that. This is your academy. Keep it clean. <laughs> oh, yes, and another thing. I do want to make mention of the fact that this year the foreign film is the most important aspect in the motion picture industry for some reason. As a matter of fact, the foreign pictures are getting better and better, as Danny Kaye told me on his recent visit to this country. <laughs> with Danny. I love foreign pictures, particularly the Italian pictures. I like them. With Gina Lola Brigida. Oh, I like that kind of picture. Except the English titles throw me a little bit. When you're looking at Gina Lola Brigida, who can read? <laughs> See, that's a gag about a girl. Uh... <laughs> but as you know, there are five nominated songs, ladies and gentlemen. Five songs that are being, they, that want, they're trying to get the Oscar, these five songs. <laughs> and they will be played tonight. And we'd appreciate it, ladies and gentlemen, here tonight, when the songs are played, please, no dancing. <laughs> Thank you. We would like now to take you to New York City to meet a very lovely and gracious young lady, a former Academy Award winner, if you please, Miss Claudette Colbert, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
Good evening, Mr. Lewis. Mr. Lewis, my tails must be coming over very nicely. <laughs> oh, is that what they are? <laughs> Jerry, you look very distinguished. And this evening, we have a very distinguished gentleman here in New York to help me present these awards. A four-time Academy Award winner as writer and director, Mr. Joseph L. Mankiewicz. Jerry, Jerry, I must compliment you. All of us back here are amazed at the dignified manner in which thus far you have handled the proceedings. Amazed, Mr. Mankiewicz? <laughs> the character with which I have been identified, that of the raucous buffoon, is merely a studied portrayal. In natural life, I am quite the antithesis for your edification when it comes to dignity, Deportment and composure, I'll make a slob out of Ronald Coleman. <laughs> Jerry, I suggest that you take the show on the road. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Keep laughing like that, honey. Anyhow, I would like to say, if Mr. Bill Miller of Price Waterhouse is available, we would like to get started to present the documentary awards of the evening, a young lady who is herself a nominee for her performance in Interrupted Melody. Ladies and gentlemen, the very lovely Miss Eleanor Parker, if you please. There are two awards in this category tonight. The first is for a documentary short subject. And the winner is... Men Against the Arctic, Walt Disney. Mr. Winston Hibbler, narrator and writer, will accept for Mr. Disney. On behalf of Walt, studio staff, all the wonderful Walt Disney photographers, thank you very much. And now... For the feature-length documentary, the winner is... In New York, Helen Keller in her story, Nancy Hamilton. the winning of this award will mean as much to Helen Keller's friends all over the world as it means to us who had the privilege of making this picture. Thank you. Thank you very much, and if you will please at the stage door, stop Eleanor Parker. She's got a hot award on her hands. <laughs> I gave one away and it should have been done in New York. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, I'm not well at all. To present the award... <laughs> For sound recording, ladies and gentlemen, a nominee for his performance in Rebel Without a Cause, Mr. Sal Minio. For sound recording, the envelope, please. The winner is Oklahoma, Fred Hines. of all the members of the sound department who worked so hard for this, especially Joe Kane, Maurice Bebeck, Glenn Rominger, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 